Opened up with Wesley and Ilya Dragunov in a number one contenders match. This match freaking ruled. Ilya Dragunov is becoming one of those guys where he doesn't just have a good match every time. He has a great match every time. And they had a great match. The usual Ilya, man, he beats the crap out of everybody. He hit this guy with a chop, and Wesley took a full flip bump off a chop, and it looked awesome. And so they go back and forth there at the end. It's just one big near fall after another. And uh, he goes for the torpedo. Wesley, it's the jumping knee. Dragonov stumbles back and then hits his falling forearm. It looked like he killed the guy. But he kicked out of that, and then finally he hits another form to the back of the head. I thought he decapitated poor Wesley, and he won. So it's Ilya Dragunov, Carmelo for the title, coming up here soon. And uh, this Wesley, he's a great wrestler, but his character is such a whiner. And so he lost this match, and so now he's quit. He took his name tag off his locker and threw it in the garbage, and he just quit. He even told his woman to come and get him. Wow. How about you just wrestle more and start winning, brother? Well, Come on. What about all these other guys that don't win? They don't quit. Maybe that's why he's the way that he is. You know, you have all these people where he talks about opportunity and how hard he worked, but then, like, somebody who's his friend comes up and, you know, says, hey, how about you give me a match? And then he got all offended all the time about it. You know, maybe there's just a personality flaw there that he's got to go work on. Hopefully he doesn't go to the NXT kitchen to do it, though, because there was carnage taking place there. And we had uh, clips of Von Wagner getting killed, and they announced he had a minor skull fracture. Luckily, he moved slightly at the last moment to take away full impact. But due to his history of brain and skull surgery, is no timetable for his return. Man. They were heavy on him, weren't they? They even used hospital in the social hospital, media. Hospital, blood. They, yeah. they were talking about blood and black and whiting it so you didn't see the blood. Well, yeah, and then they, you know, they actually gave a reason as to what happened with the feed was they cut it because it was just too brutal. So we know NXT runs on a delay. Baron Corbin came out for a promo, and first he's like, man, horrible what happened last week. I saw it. It's just terrible. Braun, you're a horrible person. Braun comes out. And then, of course, you know, Baron Corbin says, ah, man, it was freaking awesome. You cr crushed his skull. And they get in the ring and cheer. And then uh, Braun says, you know, Baron, you're an idiot. I, I don't need you to approve what I do. I don't need your approval. Uh, he put me through a table last week, so I ended his career. I didn't do this for you. And so Corbin says, I'm just trying to be nice. I was even going to pay your fine, but clearly you don't want that. Wow, you're so evil, he says. How about you try ending an Olympic gold medalist career at Mania, or ending another's before it even began? And Braun says, I don't care about your stupid accomplishments. And so they get going back and forth, and finally Corbin slaps him. The fans chant, you effed up. Braun slaps him. They get in a pull apart, and they're going to have a match. Which sounds to me like Corbin's kind of the baby face here. So I don't know why he didn't just do the promo about how mad he was about what uh, Braun had done to Vaughn and just been baby face there. But maybe he's going to be a heel, but whatever. You know who's amazing is this Miles Bourne? It's Briggs Jensen, Miles Bourne against Gulak Dempsey and Damon Kemp. And uh, to cut to the chase, this was an angle. You know, Miles is the, uh, you know, the young boy of Gulak Dempsey and Damon Kemp. But uh, Fallon talked him into teaming with her guys to take him on. But it was like all a swerve, and Miles turns on Briggs and Jensen, and the heels all, all beat him down and everything like that. But um, I don't know if you guys have ever wrestled. Most of you haven't. But um, how in God's name do you wrestle and be deaf? Because, like, you can't hear anybody call spots. And, you know, you could say, well, you just choreograph the entire match. Well, it doesn't matter how much choreography you do. Something's going to go wrong. And when something goes wrong and you're both on a separate page, you can't call a spot and you can't hear a spot being called. I mean, you can verbally call the spot or whatever, but, I mean, did the guy hear you? What is he saying back? You, you can't communicate. So uh, he's still in there working. So it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, how his career progresses because he can't call spots and he can't hear spots. So, uh, anyway. Silento Rodriguez.
but the only person of note in wrestling that I, I can think of off the top of my head who's who's been deaf, you know, like that. So interesting, you know, and you got to be, I would assume, you, you know, you just, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's very interesting, very interesting when it comes to wrestling. I've seen it with like Gallaudet football in Washington, D.C., where they have the big drums on the sidelines and, and things like that. It's just, it is a quite interesting of a thing. I did not know that about him till now. I mean, even when you, uh, you know, even when you're calling it in the ring, I mean, there's always times when, like, the referee needs to say something to you. The referee needs to give you how much time is left. The referee needs to tell you what the other guy is telling the ref to tell you. Can't do any of that. So, that'll be interesting. Andre Andre Chase met with uh, Duke Hudson, and he wants Duke to reach out to, uh, to, uh, what's her face? Thea. Thea. Leah Lale. And uh, Thea's hanging out with JC, and Thea has uh, turned off her, her uh, you know, find find me or whatever on the phone. Find my iPhone. Find my iPhone so he can't find her. And uh, they get hit on by some dudes, so they just beat him up, these idiot guys. And then Thea says, this is not my jam. Next week, next week let's go shopping. And off they go. Dana Brooke and Lyra Valkyra. Fans don't like this Dana, although they did get dueling chance. So there was let's go Dana, Dana sucks chance. And Lyra made her comeback, big kick, hit the big splash, got the pin. So Lyra wants a handshake afterwards, and, and Dana gives it to her. But as Lyra turns her back, Dana lunges, lunged at her. But uh, Kalani Jordan was there to hold her back. Where, where was she at, uh, at All In? Not only hold her back, but twist her around where she came back again as Lyra looked back in the ring and Dana had her big fake crazed smile on her face. So timing. And then we add an Eddie Thorpe promo. <laughs> this was so freaking weird, dude. <laughs> so this is kind of things I love about NXT. Eddie Thorpe is mad at Dijak. Uh... And they're doing the thing backstage and there's like the big screen in the background. And uh a Dijak appears on the big screen, he's outside. And Dijak says, and not only is he outside, he's outside in a thunderstorm, a raging thunderstorm. And he goes, Eddie Thorpe, I'm going to mark your territory. I'm like, he's going to urinate everywhere? But instead, and they start taking his belt off. I'm like, he's going to pee all over his rug or whatever. <laughs> and so Eddie ends up, or uh, Dijak takes off his belt. And I swear to God, he starts whipping a tree. <laughs> he was beating his wood. He started whipping a tree with his belt. And Eddie Thorpe is so angry that he's strapping a tree that he says, I'm out of here, and he storms off. And I don't even think we know what happened. I don't think we ever saw a follow-up. So Dijak's still out there whacking this tree with a belt, apparently. That's weird behavior. Then Was we that add- the same place that the Creeds took... Uh- What's her face? I don't know. Dom met with Carmelo, and uh, they're going to do champion versus champion next week. No belts on the line. Had a Becky promo, and Kiana showed up. Kiana James. She don't like this Becky. She don't want her here. So it looks like Becky's first challenger is going to be Kiana James. So that should be interesting. Then we had Tyler Bate versus Zach in a tournament match. Metaphor is up on their perch, and this week Noam Dar is riding an elephant. He's on safari. He's riding an elephant. And uh, this match was so, so good that at first, like, I don't know what was up with this crowd. They're, like, just being idiots. And the match starts, and they're chanting Power Ranger at Axiom in 2023. But, man, these guys are just busting their you-know-whats. And uh, about 10 minutes in, this crowd's going nuts. They are not chanting Power Ranger anymore. This match is great. And finally, Tyler hits the lariat, hits the Tyler driver, gets the pin. His first win in their version of the G1. And then they cut to, uh, in this this promo, he was definitely Pete Dunne. He goes, I go way back with Tyler. I was Tyler's first ever opponent when he was just 15. We had our tryout match for WWE together. And I'm going to prove next week I'm the baddest man in NXT. Pete Dunne versus Tyler Bate is coming up next. Can't wait. Then we had Joe Gacy and Ava. They're outside as well. But now it's daytime. I guess it was earlier in the day. And uh, they're talking about this tree. Is there a tie-in here with Dijak whipping the other tree? I don't know. 
nor do I care. Then we had Trick and Mello meeting, and this is where uh, they shook hands, and then they leave, and poor Wesley gets mad. He throws his name tag in the whatever. Creed Brothers versus Malik and Edris. They had a uh, good match. Everybody is improving. Malik and Edris look good here. They got new gear. The Creed Brothers, I mean, this was a good match. Creed Brothers hit their combo. Brutus bomb on Malik and got the pin, and uh, this was good. We had a segment with Roxanne. Apparently, she'll be facing Lola Vice coming up. But, uh, you know, she's a baby face. But, man, she's going to get booed against Lola Vice. This, uh, this NXT crowd, Lola Vice is the biggest baby face on the show. And then Lola will be in the women's breakout tournament. We're doing the breakout tournament again. So there are a bunch of random women in the locker room that will all be in this tournament. We had a two-minute Akira Tozawa Nathan Frazier match. They, they had about five minutes of action in two minutes because they're so fast. They're just both sprinting. And finally, Frazier hits a superplex into a neckbreaker, gets the pin. And an Ali promo. And then uh, we had like 85 segments. It's like we get a Joe Coffey promo. We get an Ali promo. We get a Wes Lee promo. We get Gigi attacking Blair Devon. All of this in like two minutes. Just too much stuff. And then the main event was Tiffany versus Becky Lynch for the NXT Women's title, as I talked about at the beginning of the show. This was a very good match. And you could see, like, it was exactly what I said yesterday. They did not have weeks to get this thing ready. And uh, it wasn't, like, a a simple, idiot-proof match or anything like that. I mean, they had some high spots early, and you could just see, like, Becky's calling every spot. And she's, she's just guiding this match. And Tiffany was right there with her. I don't think they had any moments where they were like, there was one moment where, you know, somebody forgot something, but they covered it up great, and uh, and they were right back on there, and then finally there at the end, they're uh, outside, and Tiffany is going to powerbomb Becky through the announce table, but Becky reverses it. She boots Tiffany. Tiffany ends up on the table. Becky gets up on this high barricade, and she's going to put Tiffany through this table with a leg drop, and I don't know if you've seen Becky Lynch lately. But she's got to be like, I don't know, what, 115 pounds maybe? She does his leg drop off the balcony onto the table, and this freaking table doesn't even budge. It doesn't even budge. But they're late in the match, and it's live, so she doesn't try and do it again. She throws her off the table, throws her in the ring, hits another leg drop, and uh, Tiffany kicks out of that. And then finally, they have a striking battle. Tiffany goes up top, tries the PME, misses it. Becky hits the manhandle slam, pins her clean in the middle, one, two, three. Very good main event. And uh, Becky is the new champion for the time being. And I guess we'll see what's going on here. Is she going to put Tiffany over for the belt next pay-per-view? I guess we're going to find out. Yeah, Tiffany had a great uh, senton, too, off the top. Looked exactly like the first one I ever did back when I was a gymnast. It actually did. But then it got uglier over the years. So hopefully hers does not. There was a point in this world, everybody, that I had the prettiest senton ever. Toes pointed, whole nine yards. And then I uh, got old. It's not a swanton. It's not. It's a senton. I don't care what you call it. I think that name sucks. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.